Okay, good evening everyone, welcome. Thank you very, very, very much for joining us for the learning of Teres Hashem, Be'ezra Hashem Yizbach. And we uh, ask everybody to please have a mind for our Chavar Adaf, uh, Yitzchak Mardechai Ben Esther Bracha, Yitzhi Fuchs. He should feel better, have an easy time, have an appetite, and uh, get back to his full, full use of life. Uh, we uh, also have a mind for a young child, Chaim Avram ben Shifra Zizel. We uh, are sponsored by uh, A.B. Spry, who is uh, sponsoring the year for the safety of our troops and uh, the safety of Klal Yisrael in general, and in specific for Yisrael Zeb ben Yuta by Sh- Shimon Klein, Lila Nishma, Sasha Anshim ben Yehuda, Gitta by Shimon Pinchas, by Erring Fishbaum for Issa ben Rezel, uh, for uh, Avidraya ben Rivka, uh, uh, and uh, Mayor ben Chayasara, and uh, <coughs> we are holding uh, by Tanur Abanan. Four lines from the bottom of Daf Samach Aleph from Beis, as we welcome in Yitzfuk, Shelley Zeitlins, uh, Stephen Holtzman, Menachem Yemansky, uh, Dr. Guy, Berish Gessen, Mimel Zachter, Yitzi Muller, Aaron Swade, uh, Irving Fishbaum, Jay Siegel, Marshall Castle, Shimon Klein, Ruben Pollock, Shalom Fogel, A.B. Spry, Nachman Chapler, Michal, Rabbi Kranz. Uh, Peso Sigelman, Abe Arbach, Moshe Lehman, Ilya Schutman, Richard Rosenzweig, uh, Abe Arbach. Uh, thank you all for joining on this Shimon Deer. Uh, and here in Shul we have Reb Blumenfeld, Reb uh, uh, Dalia Engel, Reb Kramer, Rich Lenner, Ruben Shannet, Saba, Reb Avram, uh, and uh, Yehuda from Yerushalayim is joining us now. Larry Tuchinsky, David Helfgott, on Kalalashin. It's Tan Rabbanan. Hamadak is a Gaddish. Uh, today, Marshall is back to his uh, trouble. Um, uh, remember, Marshall, what they say Avairis is from Avairis. So, Hamadak is a Gaddish. If uh, Marshall uh, burns uh, AB's crops, Vahoyabai Kalim, and in the crops were utensils, Vidolkai, and they got burnt. Rabbi Yehuda, I'm a Mishalem, Kol Ma'asher Yibaseich. Marshall has to pay for everything. The crops and the wallet that's inside the crop. The Chacham, I'm a Mishalem, El Gadda Shal Chitin, El Gadda Shal Siren. You only pay for the wheat or the barley, but the Rayan Makam Kalim, if there is a wallet there, although he doesn't pay for the wallet, he pays for the area as if it had wheat. As if it's full of wheat. However, says the Gemara, this Gemara works with one of the variables that we learned about yesterday. I made a bracha ready. Where Marshall lit it on his property, and it went and it burned uh, the stack of wheat of AB's in, on AB's property. But if he lit the stack on AB's property, I mean, he's really a, a mashkis, then then he pays for everything inside, even the wallet. Omaid Rabbi Yehuda lechacham. Rabbi Yehuda agrees to the chachamim. B'mashul mokam lechaveray lahagdish gadish, where Marshall tells Abi that he could put his stack on his property. The higdish, so Abi puts his stack on Marshall's property. The hitman, and he hides his wallet in the stack. That in that case, she'ain mishalom ala demei gadish bovat. There, Marshall only pays for the stack because that which he accepted to watch was only the stack, not for a wallet hidden inside. Now, in the event that uh, he gave uh, Ab permission lahak dishchitin 
In the event that he gave him permission to pile wheat, but he piled barley. Or he gave him permission, again, to pile barley, but A.B. piled wheat, which is more expensive. He piled wheat um, and covered it with barley. So Aaron, he gave him wheat, permission to put barley there, and he covered it with wheat. In all these cases, Marshall only has to pay for barley. Now, let's go over the four cases. Uh, some of them are quite obvious. But let's go over the four cases why in all these cases Marshall only has to pay for barley. Uh, and uh, Mo Kushner, it's great to have you joining us. Yitzi Muller, it's great to have you as we have 28 strong here. We're still waiting for uh, Mark Frankel to rejoin us and uh, the uh, Let's go over these four cases again. Um, in the event that the first case, as I said, is obvious. In the event that uh, Marshall gave him permission to put wheat, but he only put barley, so of course he only pays for barley because that's what he burnt down. The next case is where he put barley, We he gave him permission to put barley, A.B. put wheat. Well, Marshall says, look, I didn't accept to guard a more expensive variety. Only expect, uh, I only accepted to guard the wheat, so therefore he only has to pay, uh, I only accepted to guard barley, so therefore he only has to pay barley. Chitin, where he had accepted to uh, guard wheat, but Marshall, but, but A.B. covered it with barley. So there, Marshall thought that the whole stack was barley. And therefore, he gave it less care than he would have if he would have, if he would have thought it was wheat. And therefore, again, even though he gave him permission to put in wheat, but since A.B. covered the top with barley, Marshall lowered his level of guardianship, and therefore, again, he could only claim barley. Um, he gave him permission, again, the last case is where he gave him permission to put barley there, even though A.B. covered it with wheat, but the mice is, it makes no difference because he only gave him permission to put barley there, uh, and therefore, again, he's only chayif to pay for barley. I'm a Rava. Now, this is a new case. Hanoi saying dinner zav isha. Here, what happens is, is that Berish gives a dinner zav to Chaya. Now, he, he gives it to her in an envelope. So she doesn't know what it is. Va'amala, and, and, and Berish tells Chaya, he zari boy, be careful with it, Shall kesefu, because it's a it's a it's silver. So his ziktai, if she goes ahead and damages it, she goes ahead and throws it off the Verrazano Bridge. So then Mishalem is dinner's up. Then she pays for a golden coin. Because what's she doing? Damaging Berish's stuff. Mishum Damala, because Berish tells her, Mahavale Gabe. What 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 are you what right do you have that you threw it threw it you know off the bridge, Pasha boy? But if she's negligent with it, then Mishalem Mishal Kesef. She only pays for a silver coin uh, because the Amrle she tells him, look, Nitirusa de Kasba Kabila Alai. I accepted to watch silver. Nitirusa de Dava protection of gold like Kabila Alai. So Rab Mordechai tells. Rav Ashi, I don't need Rava to teach this. We learned it in the Mishnah. Uh, you teach it as an Amoraic statement of Rava 
Anam Masnisa Pshitala. I, I learned it out from what we just learned above, uh, uh, from 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 the din of uh, uh, of <coughs> of the wheat and the barley. Anama Masnisa. I learned it out from a Mishnah Pshitalan because it said Chitin Bechifon Besayrim. If uh, uh, Marshall accepted to watch wheat, but he covered it with barley. Or Siren accepted to watch barley, the chifon the chitin, even though he covered it with wheat. Ain't a mishalom ala to make Siren bovat. He only pays Siren. Why? Because he says, "Look, I only al marmalei natirus of the sari could be the alai. I only accepted to watch barley. Al kanami marmalei natirus of the dava like could be the alai. I only accepted to watch silver and not gold." I'm a rav. Shamis Milsal Reb Yehuda, I heard a detail about Reb Yehuda's din that you're chayiv for tam and be'esh. I heard a, a chiddush in Reb Yehuda, v'lo yedana mahi, and I don't know, I don't remember what the chiddush is. I'm a shmuel v'lo yada v'lo yada Abba. Does Abba uh, Rav's proper name was Abba Aricha. But most people didn't call him that way, right? But but his colleague Shmuel could address him that way. So v'lo yada Abba my Shmuel leder Rabbi Yehuda, the mechayiv on this gate tam and beish. Does does Abba not know what detail was uh, added uh, as an explanation to Rabbi Yehuda who holds your chayiv for something that's hidden? Ah, the chiddush is. Is if Marshall burns down AB's stack, AB could take an oath to swear what he has in the stack. AB said that he had a wallet with a thousand dollars in it, and Marshall says, "Yeah, sure, right." The so AB could take an oath that that's what he had and collect. Now this is cons- this is similar to a shvua of a nigzal. If you steal something, then the nigzal, the one who was, you stole from, could swear that inside the uh, box was, uh, you know, uh, uh, his golden cufflinks. So here too, says the Gemara, also takonas nigzal be'ishai. We made it the same takona that we say that a person could swear what was stolen, so A.B. could swear what was in the stack. Says the Gemara, well, let me ask you a question. You know, there's a din, Rahman Litzlan, one of the worst people is a Moser. A Moser is an informer that informs the Goyim and causes uh, hurt to a Jew. So here what happened was, is an informer informed the pagans about a Jew and the, and, and the a uh, government came and they took property from uh, a person. Can the person, when he wants to collect from the informer, can the person swear what the government took? So the Gemara asks, Boyam Amer, Asu Takonas Nigzel B'Moser Oiloi. Did they make this Takona that you could swear? For, by an informer or not. So the Gemara says, first of all, it's not clear that the informer has to pay because that's a type of causative damage. Now, one of the very complicated uh, areas in Shas is that there's two levels, at least according to some Rishayim, there's two levels of causative damage. A lesser causative is called grama. A more uh, direct causative is called garmi. An informer is under the, the category of garmi. So the Gemara says, According to the man Yama that holds that you're not chayev for causative garmi, why? The Messiris Nami Loi Dainina. Then you're not chayev for being an informer. 
Ela ki tiboyelach, the shail is, Ali ben Amani yom adayinin on din of the garmi, that we do judge the din of garmi, so do we allow the one who the Gemara came, who the government came and took from his property, do we allow him to swear? Asu takonas nigzel b'moser, the mishtav of ishokel, that then he could swear and collect from the informer, oiloi, or not. So the Gemara interestingly <coughs> says, Teku, Tish be it's Kushis be And this is going to be really theoretical because in the time of Mashiach, this is a very interesting Teku because in the time of Mashiach, there won't be informers anymore. Because there won't be Goyim to inform on anymore because at the time of Mashiach, there won't be Shib and Malkias. But it's going to be a theoretical question. Hahu Gavra, the Botash be Kaspos, the Gavra. What happened over here, well, now as you know, on this uh, forum, whenever the Gemara says Ha'u Gavra, it's usually Marshall. So Ha'u Gavra, there was a man, Marshall Castle, the Botash Bekasposa de Chavre, he kicked A.B. Silver and Shadia Benara and kicked it into the sea. Asa Marie, so, the, the, the now, the, now here, Kasposa is not silver, it's a chest that you keep silver in. So, here, Marshall kicked the chest into the sea. So, Asamariye, so A became, V'amar hachi v'hachi havali begava, I had. A lot of bullion inside. So Yasser Rav Ashi, because Ma'ayim Bey Rav Ashi uh, looked into this case. Ki hai gav What's the din in this case? So says in Gemara, Amalei Ravina lo Rav Achberei du Rav, Avimei lo Rav Achberei du Rav, lo Rav Ashi, lav hainu mas nisan. Our Mishnah said that if you burn down somebody's house, you chayiv for what's normally in the house. That if you burn down a house, you pay for the sofa, for the dining room table. So he says, you're right. If A.B. was claiming that he had silver coins in the chest, so then of course Marshall would have to pay. Hakanami. He, had, he said he had a pearls in the... In a, <laughs> Marshall doesn't know what he's dealing with. He kicked the chest and A.B. claims pearls. Do people keep pearls in a silver chest? I like. So the Gemara says again, take it. We're not sure about that. Marshall gets off the hook once again. Right? Because if it's a takeaway, we won't be able to collect because I make a mate's make of a variety. Right? So Marshall I know, don't don't gloat, Marshall. We'll get you yet. Um, as we welcome in Dr. Udell, who has a smile on his face. Well he should. Um, now Amalei Rav Yamer Luravashi if let's say Marshall burns down Chatzkel's house and Chatzkel says that he had a silver goblet in the house, what's the din? Amalei said, the Gemara says, we have to make an assessment if Chatzkel is the kind of person that has a silver goblet. Chazina, i inish amidu. If he's a rich man, the Islay Kosa de Kaspa, that has a big koshal olio, or he's a very trustworthy person that's likely that somebody gave him a deposit, the Mifkade in Shegabe, then Mishtava Vishakal. Then Chatzkel could swear and collect. But if not, then Lavko communate. Then we don't allow him to swear and collect. Rav Rav Now here's an interesting question. Ma ben Gazlin Lechamsen. What's the difference between a robber and an extortionist? So the Gemara says, oh, that's, and, 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 and Marshall is a very big expert in this. Amalei, 
Marshall says, I know. Chamsin yov demei. The extortionist pays money. Gazlin lo yov demei. The thief, the robber, doesn't pay money. Says the Gemara, if Marshall pays the money, you're going to call him a chamsin? Amale e yov demei chamsin karasle? But we know the Amar Ravuna Tlua Vizavan, even if you hang a person by his nails and uh, you buy it from him, Zvine Zvine, the sale is a good sale. Now, if the sale is a good sale, you can't call him a chamsin. Says Gemara, like Kash Adama Raitsani, Adaloyama Raitsani. It depends if the person agrees. If he says, okay, I agree to it, then you're not a chamsin. But if the person didn't say, I agree, even if he paid for it, he's considered a chamsin, he's considered an extortionist. And now, for the final, it's a famous Mishnah quoted in many places in Shas, for the final Mishnah in the sixth parak. <coughs> It's a big thing to finish Parakakainis. In, in many yeshivas, they spend a whole seder, a whole uh, season on the sixth parak of Akainis. Gate um, Shiyotza Mitachas Apatish. If Marshall uh, is working in a shop and from his hammer shoots out a spark, the hizik, and it does damage, chayiv. He's chayiv. Now, gomel she'etoyin pishtin. If, let's say, Elliot's camel is, uh, has on its back flax. V'ovar b'rishis arabim. And Elliot's camel is walking, minding its own business in the rishis arabim. V'nichnas pishtonoi l'soy chachanos. And his flax bulges into Marshall's store, Vidolkai Benei Shalchenveni, and catches fire on Marshall's uh, fire. And then the camel goes, Vihidlik Esabira, and burns down a mansion. So Eliot is Chayev. Balgamal Chayev. Because Eliot, you can't allow your animal, to go into Marshall's store and get caught on the Marshall's lamp. However, we knew that it won't be long for Marshall to be in hot water. If Marshall kept the lamp outside of the store in the street, of course, then Marshall is liable. Then Marshall is liable. However, Rabbi Yudayimah ben Ner Chanukah Potter. If it was Chanukah, then Marshall is Potter because he lit Berishus. Amar Avinu Mishmei the Rav Shma Minam Mid Rabbi Yudayimah Ner Chanukah Mitzvah Lanicha Lanicha B'Seik Esr. We could Lachayra uh, deduce from here that a Ner Chanukah is supposed to put it within ten tefachim of the ground. Now the idea of this halacha is, is that you're supposed to light the menorah in a way that people do not think you're lighting it for its, to benefit from its light. Now when you put it below ten tefachim, you're probably not using it to benefit for your light. Because if you want to benefit for its light, you would put it higher up so it could spread across the room. You wouldn't put it down so low. And the Gemara says, from the fact that we say that Marshall is off the hook, it must be that the mitzvah is to keep it uh, within ten tefachim. Because if we'll think that you could put it even higher, then why don't we say that Marshall should put it up very high above camels, above camels and the rider, to get it out of the way. We should tell Marshall, You should have put it higher than the camel and the rider. It must be that it's a mitzvah to put it low. So the Gemara says, no, that's not a good conclusion. 
perhaps it's not a mitzvah to put it low. But we're going to shift the burden of responsibility here. Because since Marshall is occupied in a mitzvah, and people know that Kanakit is a mitzvah to light by the doorway, so then we shift the responsibility to the camel and its owner, the owner of the camel, to watch out for the menorah. And rather than putting the responsibility on the one that's doing the mitzvah. You could put the Martinair even higher than ten Tfachim. My Amrit, Ibai Lakla Nuche, the Malam, Igam of Rachboy, he should get a ladder and put the Menorah really high up. Came in the Mitzvah Kasik, since he's the one that's doing the Mitzvah, Kula Hailoi Atrachu Rabbanan. The Rabbanan didn't put on so much difficulty to the one that did the Mitzvah. To the contrary, they said on Hanukkah, you have to know that people like by the door. And therefore, you have to make special uh, watch to avoid the Hanukkah menorahs. Now, we finish off the, the subject of Hanukkah. And you know, Rabbi say this is one of the only few cases in Shas that Hanukkah is referred to in the Mishnah. Unlike Purim, that has its own Mesechta, <coughs> Purim has its own Mesechta, Hanukkah, with Rabbi Yehuda Nasi banished Hanukkah from Mishnais, from the oral law. And he only makes incidental references. And that's, of course, the subject of great discussion. Why, why, did, why did Rabbi Yehuda Nasi banish Hanukkah from Shas? You know, Marshall, Marshall, who knows from banishment, you know, he, Marshall said, what did Hanukkah do to you? And the answer is, is that Rabbi Yudah Nasi, of course, was a direct descendant of Dovid HaMelech. And Rabbi Yudah Nasi was defending the fact that Lo Yosu Shevet Mi Yehuda, the scepter of the monarchy, was never supposed to be taken from Yehuda. And at the time of Hanukkah, the Hashmanoyim, that were Kohanim, took the monarchy and usurped the monarchy. And therefore, as a uh, admonition to that what they did as being wrong and should never be repeated in Kla Yisrael, uh, Reb Yudah Nasi banned Hanukkah from Mishnais. Uh, Shelley, don't look at me like that. That's what happened. Uh, says the Gemara, famous Gemara, Amrav Kahana, Dorish Rav Nasim, Barmenyumi, Mishmed Rebbe Tanchen, Ner Hanukkah, Shanicha Lamal, Mesim Amma, the uh, Ner Hanukkah that was put higher than 20 Amis, which is out of sight. So uh, that uh, 20 Amis is already uh, like six stories high. Uh, Psula, it's disqualified because people don't notice it, and therefore it won't be Pesume Nisa. Kesukkah, if a sukkah is higher than 20 Amis, so your, uh, your, your uh, eyes will not notice the Schak. Ukemovi, it, the cross beam that goes across the, the open uh, side of the uh, alleyway, if it is uh, higher than 20 amas, it is disqualified. Hadulach hakainis, hadulach hakainis, hadulach hakainis. Now, I just want to point out over here that um, we all know that if Marshall steals something, he has to pay kefal. We also know that if he steals a sheep and he sells it or he slaughters it, he has to pay four times as much. If he steals an axe and he slaughters it or he sells it, he has to pay five times as much. That's called Dalave. That's only by Sharon Seh. And only by Marshall. Um, and now... Uh, then there's also a din by Shaymer uh, Pikad. If anybody would be foolish enough, uh, you know, Jay Siegel is not on this shit that long, so maybe he doesn't know yet, and he gives Marshall a deposit. If Marshall would say that it was stolen, 
and then we find it by him. That's called Toyin Tanis Ganav. And then we find it by him. Marshall would have to pay Kefal. If Marshall was Toyin Tainus Tavach uh, that means that he says that somebody took it and slaughtered it or sold it, then Marshall would have to pay Dalit Vehei. Is that what it means? Huh? Is that what it means? We'll see. Let's see in the Gemara. Let's see in the Gemara. We'll talk about it. Now, uh, what level we'll learn inside? I just wanted to give some background before we learn it inside. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Um... Maruba midas tashlume kefal midas tashlume abba v'chamisha. Greater is the range of payment of kefal than paying dollar v'hei. She midas tashlume kefal marshal has to pay kefal and a hegis payment of sheish by ruachaim payment of sheim ruachaim. Whether he steals something that's animated, an animal, whether he steals somebody's vacuum cleaner. Umidas tashlumi abba v'chemish, but he only has to pay four, ti- four times as much or five times as much. Ain't on the hegis sell the b'shoyim b'seb belvad. Shenema ki yignavi shoraisa. If a man steals an ox or a sheep or tavocha yoy mechara, he slaughters it or he sells it, he pays dal of the hay. Ain't a goyin of achar agan of mishalm tashlumi kefil. That means that if Marshall steals it and then <laughs> Rabbi Kran steals it from Marshall. Uh, he doesn't have to pay kefal because it says only the gunav mi so ish. Only if you steal it from the owner, not if you steal it from Marshall. And if uh, uh, Rabbi Kranz takes it from Marshall and then sells it or shechs it, he doesn't pay Arba of Hamisha. Why? Because since there's no kefal, kefal is part of the Arba of Hamisha. And since there's no kefal, it would be three or four, and there's no such thing as three or four. Says the Gemara, "V'ilu midas tashlume kefal noyheges bein beganav, bein betoyin tanas ganav." Um, but that tashlume kefal is noyeg both where Marshall stole it. Or where Marshall, it was deposited by Marshall, and Marshall claims that it was stolen from him. Omidas tashlumi abav chamisha and midav tashlumi abav chamisha ain't in the heges ela beganav bilvad is only by the ganav himself like ketani. It doesn't say that. So therefore, Messiah later abchir baraba the amr abchir baraba amr ab yechnin. Hatoyin tanis ganav bepikadon. If Marshall, remember, Jay gave Marshall a deposit. If Marshall claims that it was stolen from him, Mishalim tashlum ekefel. Tovach umocher. If Marshall says it was stolen from him, and then slaughtered or sold, Mishalim tashlum yavo chamisha. Now you have a problem with that, Gdalia? Uh, yeah, he didn't. He didn't say it was. Said it was it was uh, sold and checked it. He sold it and checked it. He just said it was stolen. He happened to instead he sold it and checked it himself. Now that's not part of his claim. That's just what he did. Who says? That's Bashma from the Russian. No. It doesn't say First of all, how would he know what the guy did with the animal? That's what he says happened. How would he know? What do you mean? He looked into it. He tried to get it back. It's not much, but because it says Tavach Hamachar, it doesn't say that he said it was stolen. But it, says, it looks like it's just that's what he did. It doesn't say a time time is to be here. It just says Tavach Hamachar. That's what he did.
Yeah, Rashi is mashma like Rashi is mashma like Gedalia. Because Rashi says, Alma no gedala the hay, betoyin tanas ganav, im tovachemacha. So it's mashma that it's not betoyin tanas ganav, vitovachemacha. Okay, so let me, let me re, I, I think Rashi is more mashma like Gedalia. So what Gedalia is saying, thank you Gedalia, what Gedalia is saying over here is, is that Jay gave the, Jay gave the animal to Marshall. If Marshall says that it was stolen, and then we find it by him, then he has to pay Kefal. If Marshall said that it was stolen, and we find out that it was by him and he slaughtered it or he sold it, then he has to pay dollar of hay. Not that he claimed that it was slaughtered and, st and stolen. Yeah, I think that's more mashma from Rashi. It's very ambiguous. Uh, so the Gemara says, let's see it inside. Messiah later, Rabkir Baraba. Dom Rabkir Baraba, I'm Rabbi Yechinen. If Marshall claims that it was stolen from him and we find it by him, if Marshall said it was stolen from him and we find that Marshall slaughtered or sold it, that's, so that's one version of this proof. There's another version over here. Ikadamre. Let, let's say that this is a proof to Rabbi Baraba from the fact that the Mishnah doesn't make this distinction between Kefal and Al-Bahai. That if Jay gives Marshall a deposit and Marshall says it was stolen, then, and then we find it by Marshall. Mishalim Tashal Me Kefal. Tavach Machar, if Marshall said it was stolen, but in truth he went ahead and he slaughtered or sold it, Mishalim Tashal Me Abba Vachamish. So it's a raya, since the Mishnah doesn't say this, also this difference. So the Gemara says, what's the proof? Mikitani ain't bane? Does it say there's no difference between Kefal and Dalal Vahay but this? Maruba Kitani, more it says. So it's telling us an example of how it's more. Ton of But it leaves out, it just tells us a, a certain way that it's more. It's more in this way also. Shemidas Tashlume Kefel, Noiheges, because Kefel is both uh, by animated objects and inanimate objects. It makes no difference whether Marshall stole an animal or Marshall stole a vacuum cleaner or a uh, blender or a car. While Dalla Vahey is only by a, an ox and a sheep. So the Gemara says, Minani Mili. The Tana Rabbanon, now this Pasik is actually talking about a Shimer. Al cold var pesha for any matter of trespass, klal. This is again where Marshall says that the matter was stolen from him. Uh, on any matter of trespass, al shor al chamor al sev al sama, whether the item was an ox, a donkey, a sheep, or a piece of clothing, prat. Al kol or any lost article. If Marshall found a lost article and he claimed that it was stolen, any lost article. Chaz of a klal, 
Klal or product klal, so we have a generalization, specification, generalization. Iata don elekein prat that the din of kefil is only like shor, chamor, se, and salma. Ma prat mafurish dover metaltal, something that's immovable. Vigufay moment, it has intrinsic value. Af kol dover metaltal vigufay moment, marshal has to pay kefil or anything that's movable and has intrinsic value. Yotsu kakois, that means he doesn't pay kefil on real estate, she ain't on metaltal, it's not movable. Yotsu avodim, it excludes slaves, she hukshu le kakois, which is juxtaposed to real estate. Yotsu shtaris, it also uh, excludes notes, promissory notes, etc. She afal pisha metaltal, even though they're movable, ain't good for mum, and they don't have intrinsic value, it's only that they represent something. Yotze Hegdish, because when it says Kefal, it says it only by Re'ehu, when you steal from Re'ehu and not from Hegdish. Says the Gemara, wait a second. Ima prat mafurish tovashin nivlosa metama b'magno mamasa, a shor and a chamar, their corpse is metama upon contact and carrying it. Af kol tovashin nivlosa metama b'magno mamasa, upon contact and carrying it. Aval oifes loy, because a bird, its corpse, its carcass is not metame b'magam b'mas, it's only metame when you swallow it. Says Gemara, mi matzis amr How can you say that? But besides shoran chamar, it also says clothing, v'asal meksiv. So the Gemara says, yeah, but we're talking about the animated objects. Imre hanan b'bali chayim kamrinan. Ema, since the Pasuk talks about animated objects, I would think only Babalichaim Dovish and Nivlas and Matama Bamag Bamasa in Dovish ain't Nivlas and Matama Bamag Bamasa, but something whose corpse is not Matama Bamag Bamasa. Why? Why? Because not Kol Chad Bechad Klala Prat Ba'ape Navshay Darshin Olay. Because each one we Darshin as a specific generalization, specification, generalization. I'll call it Vapesh Ashar and Kol uh, 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 so that would tell us only like a shar, avaloif is like. So the Gemara says, but then it should have said just shar or chamar. Why does it say both? Im ke nichtiv rachman echad prata. So the Gemara says, no. Hey nichtiv, hey nichtiv rachman ikas rachman shar. If it only said shar, have I mean only something that's fit for the mizbeach, like a uh, para, like a shar. Karv legabi mizbech in shein karv legabi mizbech loy. But if it can't be offered on the altar, uh, you're not chayiv. Ikas rachman chamar. I would say only that which is kaddish bebechayra, because we know firstborn donkey you have to redeem with a sheep or break its neck. Have I mean a kaddish bebechayra in shein a kaddish bebechayra loy? Says the Gemara. Imre imkei nichtu rachman shor bechamar. Let the Torah only say an ox and a donkey. Sell amali. Why does it say a sheep? Shmami no. It's coming to include birds. Uh, we'll stop over here as we get ready for the Chumash here. We're going to do the Chumash here first, and then we're going to do the uh, Mishnayis.